everyone. Uh, this is the very first episode of Anycast, a new screencast series dedicated to real-time web application development. Uh, my name is Vladimir, I'm working on an Anycable project, and today we're going to talk about Rails, Hotwire, and Anycable. So Christmas is coming, and that's a special time for Ruby community, uh, because uh, a new version of Ruby is coming in a few days, and this year we also got a present from Rails team, a Rails 7 new major release. And I decided to give it a try and build out something new, something from scratch, and see how it, how it is to build Rails 7 application with hardware, with all the turbo stuff. And of course, uh, we're going to talk about any cable a bit because we also had a new minor release with some neat features uh, useful for hardware apps, first of all. So let's start with a, an empty project. Uh, we don't have anything, like just read me. And I also added a Rails RC file to write down all the options I want to pass to Rails new to not type them in the terminal. So there are some default ones like skip JBuilder, skip action mailbox. I almost use you uh, almost always use these options. Uh, asset pipeline prop shaft is something new, but we're not talking about assets today at all because we won't write any CSS or JS code. Uh, we're gonna build everything in HTML and Ruby. So I also want to try uh, the new tailwind option for CSS. Let's see how it plays. Uh, with Rails without Node.js or Yarn or NPM or whatever. And also for simplicity, just for this recording, let's use SQLite free database. So we have a Rails 7 and we also use Ruby 3.0 because 3.1 hasn't been released yet. Uh, so let's go. Rails U, we're gonna pass the path to our Rails RC file, and uh, let's run it. Okay, where we have README, let's skip it, and then something's happening. Installing, installing import maps. We see that Tailwind CSS Rails has been added to the bundle, and now we call it Tailwind CSS install, and it runs some stuff. Okay, we're done here. Uh, let's take a look at some particular files. First of all, we have bin dev file, which is actually a wrapper over a process manager foreman, which is written in Ruby. Uh, it could be installed at the jam. And that's probably the only reason why you would like to choose this process manager. Uh, we prefer to use Overmind, which has some neat features for, for example, debugging and managing processes. But uh, for the purpose of this screencast, let's use Foreman. And I'll add a link to the Overmind and why, it's, why it tracks to the description. So it manages the proc file, dev uh, configuration file, which lists the processes we need to run uh, with our Rails server. So we have bin Rails server, like our Rails server, and uh, also we have Tailwind CSS watch. Uh, under the hood, it uses um, brand new Tailwind CSS standalone CLI to watch the changes in your HTML and CSS files and re recompile the result in CSS. So, again, we're just going to use it as is. Let's run bin dev and see what's going to happen. So, I'm running everything within a cut spaces, GitHub cut spaces environment. So, it's not a local machine. But let's see how it works. Yes, we see the default Rails homepage. So Rails version, Ruby version, blah, blah, blah. OK, uh, that's pretty much it. We started a new Rails app. Let's stop it for a moment. What are we going to build today? What kind of use case we want to try with new Rails? Of course, since we're talking about real-time applications, one of the most uh, obvious option would be building something like a chat. But I wanted to make something a little bit more complex. So I decided to 
start building a very, very uh, first prototype of Discord Lite servers with channels, messages, and so on. So I, since we're using Tailwind, I already prepared some mockups using Tailwind Playground, very cool service to quickly, uh, you know, uh, work on uh, HTML and CSS, or actually not CSS, but just like attributes classes. So I prepared some mockups we're going to use. So we have channels, we have messages, we have an empty state. So like, that's it. That's what we're going to do today. So what kind of models do we need? Uh, what kind of data do we need? So we need channels, we need messages, and we probably need users, but that's out of scope of today's screencast. We're going to use some kind of anonymous user uh, and probably add a normal uh, user model with uh, like authentication, all that stuff in the next episodes. So let's create a channel. Okay, let's, uh, let's use scaffolding for this. Uh, Rails generate scaffold. What are we going to generate? We're going to get a channel and we can define uh, attributes. So we want a name, it's string, and I think we don't need helpers. We can configure uh, skipping helpers globally, but uh, let's do it uh, manually for now. Okay, we have channels and helpers. Let's run, uh, first of all, uh, our database migrations. Let's take a look at the migration itself, actually. String name, probably should add null false. And it's, that's it. I think that's okay for now. So migrate and it's migrated. Let's also add some seeds to see something. Um, okay, what we want to add into our seeds. Let's add two channels like general and random. So our channel class, I'm going to use insert O, which is kind of new feature of Rails since Rails 6, as I remember. And it would work perfectly here. So just a single command to insert all the stuff uh, random. And that's it. So be Rails to be seed and who. Now let's start our server again. And uh, so, okay, we don't have a root page yet. We're going to edit later. Let's go to the channels. Woo! Looks, looks awesome, actually, because we automatically have Tailwind based uh, templates, because we use Tailwind Rails, and it injects into Rails scaffolding. and. Uh, gives us some beautifully looking uh, UI, you know, like out of the box. So, okay, so we can edit channels, we can create new channel, everything works. I, I believe it. I believe so. Let's, uh, let's start working on our UI. But first of all, let's update our roads and define a root road. It's going to be channels index. Uh, let's open our mockups for a moment. So what do we have? We have a channel actually state channel show action and we have channels action which looks pretty much similar but there is no channel selected and we probably should drop the form because we don't need it. Yeah. So this is our index page and this is our show page. Let's update our templates accordingly. Okay. So we added our markup. So let's see. Okay, looks like almost like in the Tailwind playground. Now, uh, what's missing here is that we need a way to choose a channel and uh, detect whether the one is selected or not. And we need a notion of kind of a current channel. So I suggest uh, going to the controller. Uh, so we don't need uh, like we, we're gonna drop all our needed actions later, and um, for the application controller, I want to add a helper method. Let's just create an attribute reader uh, channel 
its alias current channel 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 and a helper method channel current channel that just uh, you know a convention to use current for something that is current and for the view that would make sense for controller we can just use channel and here instead of like adding the stops we s we can use now if not current channel then null channel selected that's a message and uh, in the channel class we also want to add a um, font bold class to indicate that this channel is a current channel okay now we need to implement our show method in the show method we also need channels all and I suggest adding some deterministic uh, order to them and say name sending and let's extract it into our action like before action set channels so set channels okay now we have channels available for all actions and in the show action we already have channel it's generated for us uh, by the scaffold generator and we only want to change the way the template we want to render and we actually want to render action index well let's see how it plays now we go to yeah cool now we see this render messages render messages and if we go to the root we see null channel selected okay that works uh, let's just drop all the necessary code from the controller I think uh, we need to start thinking about adding a message model right uh, we need to build messages let's stop our server first and create a resource this time it's going to be the rails generate resource uh, message what we need we need a content let's let it be text and uh, author let it be string and what else we don't need helper again <laughs> we don't need helpers at all and uh, I want only to have it uh, create action because we only create action uh, messages we do not show them edit or whatever we show them during the channel show so the only action we need is create let's take a look at our roads uh, that's something weird because uh, I don't know why it's get create I expected something like this but anyway uh, let's take a look at our migration create messages so we have content probably not no we have author again not no and what we also want to have is uh, relationship with channel belongs to channel index true and probably no false also yeah okay and let's go to our seeds now we want to generate some messages for our channels let's first uh, get our channels IDs uh, I'm gonna do this by calling black ID ID1 and ID2 this is a pattern matching syntax but I, it's, it looks better for me like we watching for like fetching IDs and then we put in them into local variables I like it uh, let's create some messages so for um, like message insert all again now we go rails db migrate again to create our new database uh, table database table and we want to recreate our seeds and that's uh, another new feature of rails 6 actually 
which I really like, DB Seed Replant. Very useful when you're just starting working on a new project. Boom. Nice. Uh, let's update our models. Channel RB now has many messages, dependent, destroy. Okay, and now message belongs to channel. Uh, I don't care about validations for now, like we can add them later. That's it. And let's go to our chat HTML. And now here, we want to render messages. Render channel messages. So we also want to specify some order. Let's do it right here. But it's better to like create a scope or whatever for that. So ID desk. Okay. Now let's run our server and see what's going to happen. So the same view. And now we open a channel. And yeah, of course, we see an exception because, okay, undefined meta channel, right? Because it's current channel. It's our helper's name. Okay, let's go further. And now we're missing a template. Messages message. Yeah, because we haven't edited it. Uh, let's take a look at our views. We have some messages, create, we don't need it. Let's drop it and create a message template. Now, woo, nice. It kind of works. So we see messages here, we see messages here. Uh, we should, like, we can leave it as is, like green messages, my messages, whatever. So it works. Next step is to add a final part of the application is the form we use to create messages. So we have a form and we want to add it to our chat and it's going to be at the end of the messages. Render messages form if current channel. Okay, let's see. Now channel messages path is missing. Hmm. Let's take a look at our roles. Yeah, surely, uh, because messages are not nested within channels and we want them to. So let's do that. We need to start our server to make sure that roads are updated. And now, yes, woohoo! Now we have a message here. We can even do something about it. And uh, nothing's happened. Okay, no template found. Rendery had no content. Well, actually it's finished successfully, but we just don't have a template or anything in our messages create action. Messages controller. Mm -hmm. What do we want to do here? Like we want to create a message. Finally, uh, we want to build a new channel, a new message. Channel messages create message params. And uh, what's missing in our params is the offer value. We need some kind of offer here, like let's do it right now, right here, unknown, and decide what to do with it later. And that's the final step is to redirect, redirect to channel. That's it. Everything else should be handled by Turbo. So we actually won't see any uh, redirects here. Let's take a look at the XHR uh, filter for our network request. So we updated it. Boom, 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 ping. And that's it. Yeah, we see messages create and then uh, the channel was reloaded. But the actual page load didn't happen because of Turbo. So it intercepts all the form submissions on the navigation. And as TurboLinks, TurboDrive does the same thing. It loads everything in the background for Ajax and update the HTML. So we see that it works. The final step 
let's add some synchronization between different, uh, say, windows, tabs, whatever. Let's put them right to, next to each other. So yeah, that's the same channel is open. Can you hear me? And it uh, doesn't seem so, right? Okay, let's add some streaming. For that, uh, we need two things. Uh, we need to subscribe to a stream somewhere. Uh, and then we can do it right here. When we have a channel, we want, can call a turbo stream from channel helper, which gonna uh, subscribe us to a channel stream cha for channel updates. Let's see what does it mean in terms of uh, our WebSocket connections. Boom. And we see that cable appeared here. And uh, let me show more. So we hear the sus subscribe command host code and the confirmation subscription confirmation received from the server. So we are now receiving some kind of data. Actually only pings because we do not send any data. Let's fix it. Uh, we're going to use the broadcastable concern which is already included for us through Turbo Rails gem. And we actually don't need to write any like uh, additional glue in code. We can just use it right away. And what I want to do is whenever we create a message, well, callbacks are evil, remember that, but for educational purposes, they're pretty good. We want to broadcast something and we want to add a new message to the list. So we want to broadcast append to. The first argument is a target. It's the same actually argument that we used in our uh, chat here current channel. So for the message is it's the channel. Um, then we want to specify the partial and it's going to be messages message. Uh, then locals and it's going to be a lot of variables. So let's make it multi line. Uh, locals. So we need to pass what message and that's self. Finally, we need to specify a uh, target and target here means an element where we want to attach uh, this item to like append this item to let's take a look at our markup we have id messages so messages is our target who is it enough to build a real-time app i don't know let's see let's reload both of our clients so they stay synchronized. Sync, sync, sync. Yes, that works. Really? Yes. Awesome. Like we just built a real time chat with like channels, messages, and uh, with zero JavaScript. Let's go further. Uh, I would like to improve it a bit. First of all, uh, what I don't like is that whenever we hit the send button, uh, we perform a create action, which returns a redirect. Turbo Drive follows this redirect and reload the whole page. And uh, although that works, we don't need to reload the whole page, right? What we need is to clear, uh, clean up the form and uh, see the message that appears on the page. So for the second part, we already have streams. So the message is already here. We don't need to return it from for the post request. We could wait for it from a cable. So let's figure out how we can update only the form contents. And for that, we're going to use turbo frames. Uh, let's wrap our form in a, fr in a turbo frame element. And I prefer to do that manually, like writing actual HTML tags, because I don't really like uh, using helpers a lot, like they make, uh, they like make code less readable, like 
compare the form we wrote with any other partial we had here. So, and the amount of typing is not really different for turbo frame. We need an ID for this frame. Let's use dump ID, current channel, form. That's going to be our ID. And uh, what else? Uh, we probably need to move some classes around. Okay, nothing changed. Everything works as it was before. And now in our messages controller, we're not going to going to redirect anything. Instead, we're going to render partial um, messages form and I um, think that's it. That should work, I guess. Let's see. So reload the page. No? Yes. The only difference here is that uh, scrolling is not happening automatically. Uh, similarly here, if we send a message, the message appears at the end of the list, but scroll position stays the same. And unfortunately, without adding JavaScript, we cannot fix it. So that's yet another task for the future episodes to make it uh, scroll to the new uh, position of the last uh, of a just received message. So now it works and uh, we can see that the amount of HTML that we receive during the form submission is really, really small. Like preview, like response is just a turbo frame and it updates the contents of the form. Instead of reloading all the page, reloading all the channels, all the messages, we don't do that. That's much more efficient. So I think that's enough for the Pew Turbo and Hotwire version. Now I want to switch to the last part of this screencast and talk about AnyCable and its recent release, 1.2, which brings two features which were originally introduced in the Pro version back in September, but now we decided that they're really useful for the Rails community especially, especially with the release of Rails 7 and the broader adoption of Hotwire. So we want this feature to be available to everyone. So JWT identification and hot streams. There is a lot could be said about these features. The short version is, with these features, you can use any cable WebSocket server without any additional hacking at the Ruby side. Uh, you don't need an RPC server, which is required usually. So let's start with the full uh, any cable version for our app. Uh, adding any cable is pretty uh, straightforward. Like let's add any cable Rails jam. First, I'm going to use version one two o. Oh. Bundle. And next step is to run any cable generator, which will help us to do everything we need. Uh, yes, let's rewrite cable YML. Uh, we're going to use local uh, development environment. That means that uh, we're going to run any cable go WebSocket server at our local machine let's let just like just by running a binary and Ankable could download this binary for us let's do that let's download the binary uh, we don't use Heroku uh, yes we want to use JWT so we add in a jam and install in it and that's it. Any cable has been configured successfully. One thing uh, that I would like to point to is that we also updated proc file dev. We found that it's present in the project and we added two new lines to it, two servers. Uh, any cable is an RPC server running our Rails app, bound to exact any cable. And any cable go, which is a WebSocket server handling all the WebSocket connections. That's the most important changes. In the cable YML, uh, we updated the adapter used and made any cable a default one, 
with the ability to override it by passing an environment variable. Uh, so let's run bin dev and see what has changed. And I'll see much more logs because we have four servers instead of just two. We have any cable, we have web, and we have WS, which is a web socket. Uh, let's open the app. Now everything is the same. Let's take a look at the logs uh, for web sockets. And we see that, oh, the URL is incorrect. Why? Hmm. That's interesting. It's still trying to access action cable, but we don't have action cable anymore. We disabled it because we switched to any cable. And the reason for that is that our template doesn't contain action cable meta tag by default, which seems strange because since we're using Hotwire by default, it sounds reasonable to add action cable meta tag to the default layout as well. Now we reload the page and we see that now the address has changed and it's 8080 cable and we can see in the headers that this is any cable. Okay, we serve in our app for any cable. Now let's see, does it work? And yes, it works. Now our application works seamlessly like just by running a generator, we switch to any cable, everything works and we can handle massive amount of connections uh, by uh, any cable uh, without any fear. Uh, now let's take a look at our proc file again and see that any cable, although we like build a generator and it's easy to install, but especially when it do, uh, for production, you have to deal with adding this to services yourself and that could be complicated and the RPC server is like magic. Uh, you don't know how to scale it, whatever. Uh, the good news is that for hotwire application, we can just remove it and rely solely on any cable. And that's where the features I mentioned before could help us. So let's take a look at the documentation for JWT authentication. So how it works. Instead of uh, authenticating your connection in the cable connection class, which we have here, connection, which is like not doing nothing for now, but we have it, uh, we can issue tokens during the connection and verify the access at the WebSocket server without touching Ruby. And for that, we're going to use uh, AnyCable REST JWT gem, which is a separate gem providing some helpers. Specifically, what we need here is Action Cable with JWT meta tag. So we replace our meta tag here. Since we added gem, it's already available here. Now we need to provide a secret key uh, for both WebSocket server and uh, Ruby application. Let's use some, I don't know, random value for it. So JWTID key in our proc file. ID key, Christmas. And the same value is in the any cable configuration. This value is going to be used, uh, which we find as a YML file, by the helper to generate a signature for the token. And uh, WebSocket server will use the same key to verify the signature. So that's the first step. Let's see. Let's restart and see what's going to happen. So now we have a bit different path for the cable with the token included in it. 
and if we take a look at the messages, we see that subscribe is here, but there is no subscription confirmation. And if we take a look at the logs, we see that WebSocket server says gRPC connection is not ready. Yeah, because we removed it. And uh, we cannot call Ruby to verify the subscription to the TurboStrings channel. And that's where the second feature comes in place. So speedy hotwire and cable ready streams. Uh, the configuration is pretty similar to JWT. Let's start with just adding it and then discuss how it actually works. We need to specify uh, some secret key for the sign stream verifier of the TurboGem. So let's add it here. And we need to specify the same key again for the AnyCable WebSocket server Turbo Rails key. Now let's start our server and uh, let's take a look at the logs. Now we see that there is a confirm subscription and the command and the confirm, they are both here. And does it work? Speedy. Yes, that works. And uh, we do not have an RPC server. We actually, our WebSocket server doesn't know about Rails at all but it re-implements the functionality of TurboStream subscription, TurboStream channel. It knows how to verify uh, stream names because it knows the key and uh, it can confirm them or reject depending on the value without touching our Rails application. That means that scaling hotwire applications with any cable is as efficient as, it, as possible because the whole WebSocket stuff is running independently and not intersecting with Ruby, Rails, whatever at all. All we need is just to broadcast data from a Ruby to a WebSocket server and that done for the same broadcasting API and that's it. And of course, if you use any other channels, not only Hotwire, you can still spin up a RPC server and use it for other channels, but Hotwire channels will be used for uh, WebSockets, for hotwire WebSockets, for turbo streams. So that's what we had to build, what we've built today uh, with Rails 7, hotwire and any cable. And that's just the beginning of our journey. So please stay tuned for new updates for new episodes. And uh, we plan to work on this app and maybe other apps and consider different aspects of building real-time applications, different problems that may arise. And uh, we'll see you in the next year. So Merry Christmas and uh, Happy New Year to everyone. Bye-bye.